Hi, uh, Nan Zanin. Um, my name is Dev, and as I um, and I've introduced myself as a spotlight coordinator. Um, I, I'm asking you a series of questions about volunteering and some of some things about you as a uh, who works for the BC Green Party. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you, Dev. Well, and about volunteer work. Um, th thank you for being being here. Well. Uh, some of you may, may recognize you as a BC Greens um, candidate in the, in the 2020, um, 20, 2020 um, staff election. What inspires you to run to be an MLA with the BC Greens? Um, well, the party inspired me to begin with. Um, just the environment um, of the party and the people that I met um, through my different work, um, like a different campaign that I was running um, prior to the SNAP election. Um, and I really liked what I saw. Um, the party was very welcoming and accessible and I felt like I'm between um, activists who are friends. Um, and I really like that. Um, and also, as I got to know more people in the party, um, it, I realized that my values align much more um, with the, uh, the BC Green Party. And um, it kind of felt like I'm finding my political home. So that was um, a pleasure to be with. And uh, what inspired me to, to get involved with the politics is um, mental health and uh, accessibility to mental health. and um so um i think um you can't really separate an activist from a counselor great what was it like to run as a candidate in the snap election during pen global pandemic say that again what was it like to run as a candidate during the the snap election during during this global <laughs> pa pandemic oh my where do i begin um it was it was wonderful and it was awful um, it was wonderful because it was so short and um, like and people who were involved, they were really passionate and engaged. Um, and I met um, amazing, amazing volunteers in my writing and amazing people who we still in touch and we still talk and organize together. Um, so that's been a blessing. Um, and um, the outreach has been a blessing. Um, and also, um, I think it was quite difficult because um, um, a lot of the plans that I had in my mind were not being actualized in terms of especially accessibility um, and reaching out to, um, to voters. Um, it was just not possible, especially during the pandemic and with the social distancing and everything being online. I think it was a very inaccessible election. So that was quite unfortunate. I agree. I've been in many elect elections, and it was not like any election I've been in. No, it was it was just <laughs> layers of layers uh, of surprise. Okay, um, you're also a counselor. How do you how do you think about um, the the pandemic and has impact on um, people's mental health? Um, in strange ways, I think in ways that we have at least our generation um, has never faced before um, in terms of like, and especially in the context of being in, um, in a Canadian society, being in um, North America, there like the isolation, the working from home, um, the privileges of those of us who can work from home and can switch online uh, to, to virtual work. And a lot of us um, cannot do that. Um, it just made pronounced a lot of, um, and, and this is not news uh, for a lot of people, it, it made um, much uh, things much more pronounced in terms of what is not working, um, especially in access to mental health, uh, what um, the impacts of um, capitalism and productivity um, on our mental health. Um, so it, I think one of the things that we really learned is um, uh, the benefits of having uh, universal basic income uh, because how the financial pressure has been impacting people's um, well-being and, and mental health um, and those are the crossover between policy work and mental health. Great. Um, me mental health is hard for people to talk about. What are what are your thoughts on on having conversations like this and and talking about mental health? Um, 
it's, we have a long way to go in terms of being able to openly discuss. Um, we've also have come a long way. Um, the campaigns that we, um, like very various campaigns that have been run in terms of mental health from uh, mood, from impacts of trauma and sexual assault, from um, gender identity and uh, sexual orientation, uh, from poverty, from addiction. There has been a lot of work that has been done and um, that's wonderful to see. And there's still a lot of outreach that needs to be done in terms of accessibility and introducing people with the idea that mental health is something that you can actively take care of just the same way that you're taking care of your body. There's no shame, there's no stigma about it. Well, there, there shouldn't be any stigma about it, there still are. Um, and also for um, employers to make accommodations for when our uh, minds and our uh, mental health is suffering. Right, um, I know it also takes a, um, a toll on mental health for, for youth. Do you, what do you think that should be done for that? Um, I, I feel like I will be sounding like a broken record, but more resources, more accessible, available, um, culturally appropriate and safe resources um, that um, that is going to be uh, within reach, more support for families, absolutely. Um, a lot of the times, if you look at the, the whole dynamics and uh, kind of like a bit of a holistic picture, the more resources and support families have, the more access to um, information and support that they have, the better off the youth are and um, making sure people are kept with the people that they want to be and not to be taken to, um, forced to be taken to foster care or um, uh, residential care that they don't want to be. Um, the more supported schools are, it is much better for the youth mental health um, and having uh, models um, that people can look up to, youth can look up to. That's also very important. Great. Um, as a counselor, what do you think needs to be more needs more to be done in general? <laughs> a lot um, on on all levels, uh, and I think at the policy level, um, especially BC Greens is in the right direction of advocating for. Uh, more coverage for individual and group counseling. Um, I think that's the direction that we want to see that everyone has access to uh, mental health support um, that is appropriate for them and it's um, needed for them. Uh, right now, um, if you want to um, see a counselor in a nonprofit, uh, sessions are limited. You don't have a choice in um, selecting your counselor or their specialty. Um, and uh, when it's, it runs out, you're bounced, by, you're bounced to another agency with their own wait lists and modalities. And if you want to access private practice, um, you either need to have a high enough income or benefits, which we know a lot of frontline workers don't have. So it's a, it's a real um, unequitable uh, process at the moment. And we really need to move into a direction of equitable access to mental health. What, do you, what are some things you do to support mental health? For myself? Yes. In general, do you help, I mean, to, 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 help, others, <laughs> to, help, other, to help others or yourself? Um, to help myself, I got a dog. Uh, a couple of years ago, I just adopted a dog and it's been the best thing. I knew that um, I had a dog before and I knew just the joy um, of animals, um, if, if animals are a thing. And um, to support others, I, um, it's, it's a kind of a cliche of uh, put your own oxygen mask first. Um, and I do that. I have um, clear boundaries um, so that I can show up for the people that I care for, especially in the pandemic, people in my bubble. Um, it's, um, we've been crucial uh, as everyone else's has been um, into for survival. Um, so I've been taking care of myself. Um, asking for help is something that I really needed to learn of when to say, this is something I cannot help myself with and I need help and finding my power and my voice in, into saying, uh, this is where I need to reach out to someone and, and have them come and take care of me. Great. I'd like to end our interview on a positive note. What, what, what do you look forward to after the pandemic? <laughs> I thought about it when I read the question and uh, when and one of the things I'm really looking forward is to cook 
a feast and invite everyone that I have missed um, from pre-pandemic. And also I've met a lot of amazing people because of the snap election and just in the in the past year. And I want to just invite them all to my house and just everyone know each other and hang out. That's what I'm that's my fantasy. That sounds fun. Thank you for taking your time to interview for the interview about mental health and all your volunteer work in the BC Greens. Thank you, Deb. Welcome.